Blanche, I can see she's got a couple of questions for you, but going back uh, to the question I asked you just before our break. Uh, by the way, guys, I've been trying to post on Facebook for some time. I'm having a lot of problems. I don't know why. No, this is the story of my life in Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway, but you can still call us on 257 or 257 Facebook, my post is not showing at all, so we'll just hope. I don't know. There's nothing I can do. Can you use your magic? Can you use your magic? <laughs> anyway, let's see. So, why aren't you playing, you not you, but them personally, but you and everybody else in the industry playing the role, crying out to officials, to the public, having a media outcry, doing whatever you can, because the state of our relics, our antiquities of whatever era, are just being neglected, pure and simple. Okay. First, first, I'm going to put the points okay. so that we can be quick, fast, and not very boring because the stories between the public and the authorities is a long-going dilemma, if you like. Mm -hmm. If you talk outside the box, if you think outside the box, if you are putting new ideas, and as you know, I suffered from that in, in the past, that I'm, I was trying to put new ideas, number one, who are you to say those you are not With the respect to them, having a clean antiquity is not thinking out of the exactly, box. Exactly. It's not thinking out of the box that you're yeah. going to make me mad. No, 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 you're right, you're right. <laughs> but I'm trying to tell you this is that we don't have any bridge of support between the public and, and the person who is in the, who's sitting on, the, on that desk. Authorities do not listen to whoever is outside. And that's been going on for Why years. Are they simple, Why yes, is the civil question? servants that have nothing to do with antiquities? I, I say you guys have got the best way to know what's going on outside your office by talking to people who are not authorities. Like myself, because I'm going to say it blunt. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to be fired if I said so. And I'm going to talk freely. Mm -hmm. So you have the chance of your lifetime to talk about somebody who's walking around the monument for the last, I don't know, 23, 24 years, and he's going to bluntly tell you, uh, I met Randa, and Randa told me that the two days ago she met hell in the pyramidary, um, and, and so on and so forth. So why are they not listening? This is the question that you ask, this question that I'm asked. That's number one. Number two, cry out loud, check on my Facebook how many campaigns I made only in the last two years, only in the last two years. And if you're talking about the last 10 years, back to eternity, that's a campaign dealing with the month. Mm -hmm. Rebuilding the lighthouse of Pharos. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you that sometimes, like, I was on this FM, and I was talking about rebuilding something many years ago, and I was talking about rebuilding the lighthouse of Pharos. And on my email that night, a, 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 a gentleman from a certain bank called me, and he said, well, let's, I will let's, sponsor, let's sponsor that. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that didn't, nothing happened afterwards because I'm not a, I'm, I don't deal with finance in my campaign. My campaigns are, are pointing with fingers towards something. You want to do so, some finance, it's authority. Can I ask a question? Maybe you have the answer, maybe you don't. So where does the budget of the Antiquities Authority go? Is it for I, international campaigns abroad? I, I don't, where have, do they spend I don't budget? have an answer because I'm not government. I'm a freelance tour guide. So I don't have an answer for that question. And if you ask about that, Flying museums, that's called flying museums. I'm the first person in 84 million people to tell you stop the flying museums. These are the antiquities that go abroad? Stop them. But there's a, there's a campaign for and a campaign against. There's an argument for and an argument against. That is, I please beg the authorities to do with me. If I've been talking for 15 years, and, I, and it was, sometimes I was talking to the Minister of Culture at that time, and I'm telling him, sit with us or with me, or with anybody who talks the same way I do for the last just half an hour. Just one second, is it Iman on the line? Uh, hello, Randa. Hello, Basim. Hello. Hi, I'm Mrs. Iman and Minyawi, Basim. You remember me? Ah, I'm yeah. talking about Minya because you you came from Minya, I think. I, I, I love, uh, I love Minya, yes. I, I'm yes. not from Minya, but I love Minya. Ah, you see, Basim, my mother is from origin Greece. Then I have the attitude of the south of, of Egypt, Menya, and the same le portrait comme les Greeks. So have you and the Klamha and the story about a king, king uh, from south Egypt has married from a Greek? Uh, you want, yeah, you want to compare your entered. family to uh, some uh, character in the history? Yes. Uh, that's an interesting comment.
one. That that I didn't hear in a long time. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you can, and I was half out of the topic of your topic or what or what. But no, no, no. Anything that deals with antiquities in Egypt, uh, any any places of interest to visit in Egypt, uh, this is more than welcome. And it doesn't have to be Cairo, of course. Anywhere, of course, many is very famous. Okay. Well, and, you know, and you know who is Minyawi, don't you? <laughs> Khufu, Cheops, the who, owner of the Green Pyramid. Who was he is that? From, from Greece. He was grew <laughs> up in Armenia, so this is this on its own makes you very proud. Okay, and I want to dedicate Ramda and you by saying the song of Moon River of Eddie Williams. Okay, I'll look for it. Ah, yes, like the Nile, but I'm Moon River. Okay, 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 I don't have any info and many times I ask that there must be every month a magazine that is delivered by the Minister of Archaeology and this or antiquity and it tells us what's happening, it tells us what type of restoration is this and it can be distributed for free. And they did something very similar to that, all right? With who, uh, during the rain? Every, it's uh, in the last uh, few years. They how was it doing? I can't remember who was responsible for, mm -hmm. for publishing it, but it was the minister, yes, it was the minister of antiquities. Mm -hmm. But who is the leader of the move? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But let us say, you see, that's what we did. We always mention names. I want to mention a group of people. I want to mention the idea of everybody participating, mm -hmm. not only one person leading. Mm -hmm. Because when you when one people, 25th of January was not one person. No, this okay. was not. So it works. It works when a group of people does. And the but group of you are not. Yes. <laughs> it's not a very good argument. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but that's what we did to ourselves. I mean, uh, and by the way, because at the beginning you mentioned something about revolutions in ancient Egypt and, uh, and strikes, and the, the, the labor strikes, and, and that happened. That, that happened by accident. Uh, so this business of the ancient Egyptian character uh, the, the, the kind of the quiet, the peaceful guy who, who does not object anything and this, because that's one, one of the questions uh, that was, Iman was mentioned, one of the comments is why uh, are we people who are like, okay, uh, we're going to take that ruler and he's going to do whatever he wants. With I think it. this is a modern thing because uh, during the reign of Napoleon and others, that was not how the Egyptians were. Oh, no, no, no. It's probably yeah, colonialist. Uh, well, you you see how, how, how the Egyptians dealt with the British uh, occupation, they did with French, Napoleon and the French, mm. uh, what they did with the Mamluks. Uh, mm. uh, uh, Muhammad Ali played it right. Uh, I don't agree with everything Muhammad Ali did, but Muhammad Ali played it right and he he gained the hearts of the, he actually did some renovations in the country that can be touched by the people. He, I, I don't care if you rebuild the, the palace of presidency. Mm -hmm. I want you to, to repave that street. I want you to put to the bread and butter on the table of, of the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, how, that's how they are going to appreciate you. That's how they are going to appreciate your job. Mm -hmm. uh, bridges are great, but, but bread is, is even more important. Mm -hmm. So, yes, he was a rebel. Yes, the Egyptian was a rebel. Yes, the Egyptian was an inventor. Yes, the Egyptian was and was and was. But enough was was. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You've got to stop that. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And if you want to mention history, because I, I'm a man of history, so I'm going to defend, you know, that history is important. Yes, it's important. Look what Santiana said. Santiana said... Um, Santiana. Santiana is a man who, who read in history, he was, his famous uh, sentence, a man who said one sentence, rings in my head all the time. Those who do not read their past are condemned to listen it and repeat it. Mm. So, if you are not going to wake up and see what happened when the Egyptians didn't unify. Mm -hmm. In ancient Egypt, we have a very famous story of a king called Pepe II. Pepe II took the, because it was inheritance in, mm -hmm. ancient, in ancient Egypt. It was inheriting, the yeah, son inherited yeah, the, yeah, power, yeah. the throne. He took the power in your six. He died 100. Wow. Actually, we had somebody from the ancient era living through 100? Mm -hmm. Ramesses II died 91. 93. Yeah. 90. And uh, Tutmosis III died 54. Yes. Yeah, but many others died very young as well. The populace, 45.
five years, they have to change. Every change? Mm -hmm. That's why when I tell yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why when I tell you they got married when they were sixteen and seventeen people and eighteen, the people said, Oh, that's early, my son. That will cause problems. That's mm -hmm. not acceptable. I said, No, it's very acceptable if you're dying forty five. Mm -hmm. You wanna marry fifteen and sixteen because you're dying forty five. Yeah. So so anyway, uh, the, the, did the Egyptians take that person ruling for ninety four years as they did? accusation of the Egyptians, as Iman was commenting, why are we always this business of the king and, and the slaves, the king uh, who's ruling and, and everybody else is like under, underneath his, uh, his orders. But they were not only the kings, they were also deities, they were seen as extensions of the gods, the deities, right? Okay, but you'd be amazed to know that we have a, a, a song in ancient Egypt. A man is saying, those who build themselves pyramids, Look at their buildings now. It's destroyed. It's dilapidated. They can't even help themselves. Nobody came back to tell us what happened. Nobody came back from that journey of eternity that you are talking about. That song, to me, spells a rebel, a person who is rebellious against every core of the temple's priesthood, hierarchy business. Mm -hmm. You are trying to feed us this business that the, the king is a half deity and then he becomes a full deity in the afterlife. He is the son of Ra, he is the son of the sun. He is always strong. We never saw a weak king mm. or a weak pharaoh. Mm. We never saw a pharaoh with wrinkles, with huge wrinkles on his face. Ramesh II in his 70s or something is showing us when he was 18. <laughs> This is how he wants to portray, to be portrayed in the afterlife. This is how he wants to, he wants to be ruled every young. Mm -hmm. So what happened after 94 years of ruling? The government became weak, corruption hit the government. Read your history. When you rule long, corruption hits you badly. But we don't read our history, especially our rulers, especially the rulers around the world, because they keep on repeating the same mistakes. Over and over again. Over, it's like by the book. As if they are insisting. And that is something we look at, people who read, modestly read in the history. We go, we can't believe you. You are, in, this is a copy and paste of the same problem that the other king did, or the, the, the same fault or mistake that the other king did. Why are you repeating? He ended up being hung or being in prison or being thrown exile, into the history of exile. Or something. Mm -hmm. and still insisting on this. This is why I remember when Dr. Morsi uh, won the election, I was on air on your, your neighbor broadcasting station, Shabur Riyadh, and I said, as an Egyptian, Dr. Morsi, I am telling you one request. When you come inside today, take yourself and go to your office, close your door, and read Khalid Muhammad Khalid, Omar ibn Abdul Khalid Muhammad Khalid, the famous Islamic writer, and he wrote number of people, men around the Prophet. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Men around the Prophet. Mm -hmm. how it was and uh, uh, Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, you can finish the book in half an hour. It's a good reading. Mm -hmm. But this book is telling us about a man who, if we follow the way how he ruled, by the modesty, how he did the modesty, how he was afraid of, of everything, every move he would do, is it correct, is it correct, is it correct? So, if we read our past, and that is the importance of history, so that we don't read. What happened? We need to learn it, we're not just read. You are, and, and, and very well said, and practice. Yeah. You practice what you read. Yeah. After Pepe II, 94 years of ruling, a social revolution took place in ancient Egypt. But Was it by the workers, the lower, the lower classes of society, or was it, it was by the society? It was by the society. Mm -hmm. All in all, against that business of corruption that hit the government, mm -hmm. right? Unfortunately, you tell me if history repeats itself or not. Egypt went into a very long period of insecurity in the streets. Mm -hmm. This is your inflate on me by accident. It only lasted for 120 years. The yeah, insecurity on the streets? And we have a text, Interrupted Times, we call it. And the Interrupted Times is telling us about how men used to go in the streets when they were four and they returned three. Somebody got killed. Mm -hmm. 
streets are not safe. The peasant farmer is going to his pastures mm -hmm. with a shield in his hand. Farmers do not carry shields in their hands, but they do now, because there is a great deal of insecurity in the streets. What happened is due to that weakness that the government reached, some of the nomarchs, some of the rulers and the governors of some of the norms, some of the districts of mm -hmm. Egypt started to rule in their own right. Mm -hmm. so, Egypt, is true. Mm -hmm. so Egypt was separated in different small countries. Mm -hmm. That's because everyone was greedy, everyone wanted a piece of the cake and everyone wanted to be the ruler. Hello, 2013. <laughs> Hello, 2013. Are we going to wake up or what? You know what happened then? There are kingdoms outside your amazing, beautiful Egypt who are waiting for a moment like this. Yes, I'm sure. Because they've been dreaming of taking one centimeter of your land. Because they know that your land is special. Now, in ancient Egypt, what happened is that, yes, the south became separated from the north again. Mm -hmm. We became two countries again. Mm -hmm. We need somebody to come and unify. And who else that they unified? Egypt it took 120 years of different rulers. And who was the one who actually brought the country back together? All the way up till Montuhatib the Great. They call him this way, mm -hmm. Montuhatib the Great. The, the expression the Great was given to very few rulers in ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. One of which, of course, is Ramesses the Great, because everything Ramesses made was huge. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. Alexander the Great, because mm -hmm. the guy was amazing. He was really amazing. It, and even though his... Now, here is a man who is history is written by the sentence, by the day, by the minute, the details of how Alexander the Great's life, the 32 years of his life was written, is as if like he's sitting right beside you now. Mm -hmm. You want to know when did he comb his hair, he will tell you mm -hmm. about that, because there were people right beside him writing that. And they couldn't tell us where he was buried? Exactly. <laughs> you see, they always leave you with a question mark. But that's what makes you on your toes mm -hmm. in this business, mm -hmm. you know? That's yeah, true. And, uh, and it, it, it makes you work. But what I'm trying to tell you here is how Alexander took that title, Alexander the Great. Montuhatib II also was given that title, Montuhatib the Great, because he reunified Upper and Lower Egypt for the second time. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to tell you here is that during that time of turbulence, the turbulence were among people and there were also people who were using their power. We know for sure a servant of a man who works for the king, used his power. The servant of a man who works for the king. The king's name was Shiti the mm third. -hmm. The man saw a beautiful peasant farmer who was come from Natron Valley. Mm -hmm. His donkey and his products that he sent. He loved it. He wanted it for himself. Mm -hmm. He wanted it to himself and he wanted to actually rob it. Mm -hmm. You want to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So he beat up the guy. I'm, to summar the I'm summarizing those. Mm -hmm. I took all the stuff and went inside his house. Now, who in Impu, that farmer, who was from Natron Valley, stood right in front of that house for 10 consecutive days. On strike? <laughs> on protest? As on pro yeah. Asking for his rights. Now, we are talking time of turbulence, time of turmoil, time of weakness. And here comes a farmer who, with all his eloquence, we, people call him the eloquent farmer, the eloquent mm -hmm. peasant. And with all his eloquence and all his intellectuality, and he started, after those 10 days, he started. So this man was standing. He was the first Mautosan. He was the first guy who stood and made a stand up, and he actually sit in. He was, mm -hmm. he was a sit in person. Mm -hmm. Now, why am I taking that as an example? Because that's very important to, to compare with our character now, in 2013. Because who, his name is like Ho In Impu. Ho In Impu, number one, he did not get afraid of the man who has got the power. Who took his thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He shouted for 10 days. Now, during those 10 days, what did the government do? Mm -hmm. The government gave him food and gave him drinks. This is how the government dealt with a protester. Mm -hmm. And at the end, his Did he right, get his right came back to one to his brother. To no, as a matter of fact, the man gave in and went. No, the man who this servant was working for, mm -hmm. he was the man.
man who decided. The king said, you decide. So we thought he's going to decide for the guy who works for him. Mm -hmm. No. As a matter of fact, he gave three decisions of the most amazing man. Mm -hmm. First of all, all the products are given back to the farmer. Two, the servant who beat up the farmer is going to work as a servant for the peasant farmer. So we can get the other treatment, the other end of the stick exactly. and realize how he treated exactly. it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And by this, justice period mm -hmm. in ancient Egypt, during time of turbulence, time of political turmoil. Mm -hmm. I think we have a caller for you. Okay, let's take it on the air, Mrs. Hello, you're on the air. Um, thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I, I would like to make What's a your name, first, first of all. I'm sorry? What's your name, Mrs.? Uh, my name is Lamia Ibrahim. I'm, um, I'm calling from Ismaili, and it's uh, the first time I tune in to your um, service now. At this time, on this day, I just turned on the radio and hear with that voice. Uh, first of all, I, I hope you uh, you forgive me if, if I start with a relevant um, note, but uh, the voice of your guest is uh, almost exactly like Muhammad Shibl, Allah and um, because he said 2013, I thought this was a recorded item, <laughs> and I was amazed, because really, it's the, the voice is by God, yani, um, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, that that's one thing. Did, uh, that make, did that make you happy, or did it make you wonder, or what? Oh uh, no, no. Uh, of course, um, it's not like happy wouldn't be uh, a word. very um, a very precise description. But uh, I I miss the guy very yeah, much. Maybe remember the word. Uh, I miss him so yeah, much. You remember him. And that's he uh, he uh, for me he represents a, a list of uh, good human qualities. God bless you. Excellent. God bless you. Allahumma. That first uh, a first point. The second thing is that um, I find that you are going through very interesting information um, in history, and um, I once uh, was uh, curious about family life in ancient Egypt, okay. and that required a bit of uh, unusual digging, <laughs> which led to uh, deeper and deeper uh, dimensions. Uh, of course, I went through um, information uh, regarding the, the little point that uh, um, I was curious about, but that led me to other information, uh, perhaps close to what you're talking about, sir, um, uh, the, the relation between uh, the various categories of, of society back then. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, really very interesting how, um, how considerations like, uh, or principles, or values like uh, dignity and rights uh, were... Um, Are you interested in that? Uh, of course. My, my mother graduated from the, the Faculty of Literature History section wow. in Cairo University wow. back in the 60s, uh, late 50s, 60s, I suppose. Mm. Um, and so, um, I don't know, by genes I'm interested in, in history. Well, let me, let me then, uh, when we start going back to our show, let me uh, give you a couple of those proverbs and a couple of those uh, uh, wise uh, men statements that was left on papyrus and, and other uh, matters. Th that could be of an interest. And by the way, I am, inshallah, giving a couple of lectures at okay. Ismailiya. Really? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's very interesting. I think it would be around 20. Get in, would you please get on my Facebook? And sure. know and know about that because an Ismailia young lady has managed to uh, get us a, a couple of lectures there. Really? And a huge event. Um, Where, please? I, the, all the information uh, we are going to post it uh, around the 21st or something. So if you are going to enter into uh, Bassam Books, Bassam Bo Books okay. on Facebook, can I can I actually say that? Yes, sure, sure, sure. Go ahead. So, yeah, so on the, on the Facebook, uh, we're going to let you know when and where and this and that Thank and you. all info that you need. And um, one of the lectures I'm going to be talking about 1155 BC revolution that happened in Egypt. Really? Which actually took place. I'm going to reveal something now to, to get you to go to those lectures. I'm going anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, 1155 BC uh, revolution which took place in ancient Egypt took place few weeks 
before the king of Egypt continues his 30th year of ruling. Really? If you are not going to read your history, you are going to repeat your mistakes. Very significant numbers. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's very interesting. And, and thank you for having me. You have a, also your page on the web, on the website, right? The Semish Shaman. Right? You just type the Semish Shaman Google. You have news there and everything, you right? And where the lectures and, and everything. And articles and this and that. Yes, so. And on the YouTube, and, and also on the YouTube, because the, the youth who was with us, bless them, they take all the TV and sometimes the radio shows and, and they report them and they put them on the YouTube. So when you are free, just print the Semish Shaman English once and, and another time in Arabic. And you will get loads and loads of radio shows and in English and Arabic and, and also my TVs and Maspiro stuff and, and all sorts of things. MashaAllah. Uh, I'm, I'm so grateful and um, I'll, I'll, um, I'll check with the same book uh, yes, page. And, and, and finally, are you interested in women in history? Uh, of course. Stay tuned tomorrow 9.30 on Nile TV International in English. Okay. 9.30 in the morning, inshallah. Yeah. And I'm going to be talking about women who we do not know in our history. Away from Nefertiti. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. Please, away from this Nefertiti. This is the kind of feminist stereotype, sort of. <laughs> Thank you very much. Great ladies, but Salat, yeah, we need another, another yeah. history to be written. Okay. I, think it, I think that um, every uh, woman in her own environment uh, is striving and struggling to raise her kids or uh, keep the, her house together or whatever, uh, a lot of challenges um, every day. I think each and every one of these um, is a good woman, oh, a great them. woman. Oh, bless them. Bless oh, yeah. Them. And men. We are the result. And men. And men as well. Uh, but I, I always say, Anna, we, we uh, uh, told huge men we are the result of, of that amazing phenomenon that we call mother. I'm sure that, I'm sure that uh, all women in, in, in your family are, are very uh, are very blessed with this kind of appreciation. Thank you very much, and I'm really lucky to to get uh, to get in touch with you people. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. So that let me hear from Miss Malia. She'll be going to your uh, letter, shall we say? Uh, you yes. still don't know where it is, right? Yes. You give lectures all the time, Miss Yes, you? We, we do you give it in Arabic. You give it in English. Yes, all the time in university.